We still living when the loving is gone Kill Kill was a government song Sing along, it's just my brothers in arms Gotta stick together now more than Hello ever. YouTube, G-Man5338 Coming at you today for some mental health before we get into that, I want to remind you to like, share, subscribe, and comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking about my content. And if you like the content that you're getting here, be sure to check me on Instagram, yo. Got lots of pictures and videos, all kinds of stuff on Instagram. And I tend to keep up more with Instagram when I'm not on YouTube. So uh, if you're bored in between posts from me, always check on Instagram. And I hope you're all doing well and good. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in on, uh, when did we do that? Saturday night to drop the channel's theme song, um, which is also going up on iTunes today. I'll be in touch with the IRS. I need to get some kind of taxation number uh, from the U.S. I don't know why. I'm not an American. I don't want to be paying for anything that's going to American taxes. I love you all. America, but I ain't paying for your shit, yo. Got enough problems here in Canada as is that I'd like to throw my money into. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I gotta do that now. I, I gotta owe some money to the man in the States. And that's life. Um, but, so we'll be doing that. As soon as I get that number, I will be dropping the song on iTunes. And I hope you all check it out. Because like I said, half of the proceeds from that are going into uh, a charity. Uh, it's a uh, an indigenous uh, cultural center in my hometown that I've done a bit of work at. My grandfather also did some art for them back in the day. Um, and I would just like to keep up the... the uh, you know, my contributions to them. It's been a while since I've, I've had anything to do with them, and I would like to change that. Uh, so, yeah, definitely check out Kill Kill by Q-Rock on iTunes. I'll uh, let you all know when it's posted, and I will drop the link. Uh, also, a reminder, I know that most of my, my, my followers, my supporters out there know that we've got this going on, but I've got a 500 uh, subscriber giveaway going on. It's two linear action rotary tattoo machines from Dragonfly and all the things you need to get them running and tattooing. Okay, the whole setup, the whole kit and caboodle. Now, because it's Mental Health Monday, something I want to talk about that I haven't talked about yet are dreams. Um, because they... Um, they affect a lot of people with PTSD, I'd say probably just about 99.9% .9 of us. Um, you know, those those dreams, uh, initially for me, my nightmares um, were about, there were four incidents uh, that I've kind of been through overseas that were really kind of uh, next level for me that, that really contributed to the breaking of my brain. Uh, and I have nightmares about those frequently, but I've been having nightmares about them for years, over a decade, um, you know, and it is what it is. I, I, I'm in therapy for them. I, I talk to my doctor about them all the time and I try to deal with them. But as things have progressed in my therapy, my nightmares have evolved um, and they all all of them start out the same way. I'll always be going through at least one of these incidents from overseas in my nightmares. I will re-experience it. And it's an intense experience. Um, you know, if, if I come out uh, out of my sleep from that dream, uh, you know, my heart will be pounding, I'll be sweating, uh, stuff like that, blurred vision, all kinds of stuff associated with super high blood pressure uh, and, and extreme exertion. Like if you work out or you go on a really long run and at the end of it, you just want to barf, you can't really see straight, uh, you're sweating your ass off, uh, you're shaking. Uh, it, it's just, if, if you've pushed yourself to those limits, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and that's what it's like waking up from PTSD nightmare. Uh, but as I said, mine have been evolving. Um, you know, as I come to grips with, with certain aspects of my issues and, and make progress in therapy, um, my fears begin to change. Um, you know, I, I've, it's no secret. Like I've discussed my, my, you know, one of my problems is, is that day to day I can, you know, I, I go through this feeling that that's it for me, that this is going to be my only day. Um, and it's, 
depression, depressing. It makes me anxious because, uh, you know, I can't enjoy anything. I'm always looking over my shoulder uh, because I'm worried that something is coming. Um, and then I can't enjoy shit because I think I'm dying or I think I'm going to get killed. Not that I'm dying, but I think that somebody is going to come and kill me or something is going to come and kill me. Um, and I get caught in that and then I start getting bummed out. That leads to depression because I start thinking that this is it. My time is up. Um, I've got no more time with my family, uh, you know, my wife and kids and, and that's it. And what have I done on this earth? It's incredible. Um, these are very intense feelings for me. It's very hard to get over. Um, but on top of that, I, I, on top of, you know, worrying about losing my life, uh, I worry about losing my family because my family is my anchor. They, they got me through my, my suicidal shit. Uh, they have been my anchor through this. They're the reason that I get up and I choose to live every day. Um, and so it, my nightmares evolve, uh, to now encompass my family. Um, and so I, the dreams, my nightmares, it always starts off where I've got one of these four incidents from overseas, okay? Uh, and then usually I come home. Um, and from there, uh, whether it be I messed up, something happens and I lose my family, whether it be through uh, my own choices, my own devices, or something happens. And maybe there's a natural disaster, a war, uh, and I have to go back into the army. Uh, I have to go back and serve. But my family ends up with me in these natural disasters or these war zones, uh, and they don't always survive. And the nightmares are so intense that I, I like, I feel that uh, physically, emotionally. Uh, and when I get up, it can take a half hour to shake that feeling to realize that that nightmare wasn't real. Um, and that's where I'm at today. Last night was rough. Sunday, I thought I had my shit locked down. I was feeling a little better. Um, Saturday night's uh, live chat went well. Um, and I was, I was feeling a little better. You know, I've been trying to focus on my art, uh, music, all kinds of stuff to just to one thing a day to get me out of this, this pity shitty party that I've been having. Um, but last night, I don't know. It just, man, it struck with a vengeance. Um, and it took it took most of my sleep. Like I, I probably slept for about forty five minutes last night. Um, I couldn't get to sleep afterwards. I didn't want to go to sleep afterwards because I knew what I would be facing again. Um, so pretty much just lied on the couch, uh, watching paint peel, yo, and dealing with this shit. Um, and that's what it is. But you know, uh, as as hard as these dreams are to deal with and to process. Um, there is a lot of meaning in these dreams and you can learn a lot about yourself. Uh, and if you're going through PTSD or you're, you have depression, anxiety, they can teach you a lot about what is going on in your mind that is leading to this stuff. All right. And as with all problems in life, when you can identify the problem, when you know what the problem is, it's much easier to deal with it. In fact, it's the only way you can deal with a problem is to identify it. Um, so a lot of times I sift through my dreams. I look for meaning. I look for uh, answers, whatever. You know, there may be hidden memories in my dreams. You never know. But, you know, I talk about it with my doctor. My doctor, uh, you know, uh, I think she also kind of has that mindset that dreams are, are very indicative of somebody's mindset or where they're at um, at any given time. Uh, and so we talk about it. And that's something that I want you to in, encourage you to do uh, is to, if you're having these nightmares and you're having these things, they're not easy to deal with, but you have to, um, you know, otherwise it is going to run your life. And I, like I said, I'm not a passenger in this shit anymore. I'm sick of living like that. Okay. I am going to take control of all of these issues that I've got uh, one at a time and, and I'm going to be successful. At least that's what I tell myself. Um, and one of the ways is by by assessing your dreams, your nightmares. They're hard to look at, like I said. They're hard to think about. But there are answers in there, okay? Um, there is a lot of, of helpful information in your nightmares. So when you can, uh, take the time to rehash them. If you have professional help, talk about it with your doctor, okay? Maybe a close friend. Because it always helps to have a second set of eyes on your nightmares, 
all right? They tell a story, and not everybody interprets one story the same way. So, you know, it's always a good idea, like I said, to have somebody that you're comfortable with if you're at that point, because not everybody with PTSD is going to trust people, yo. I don't really trust anybody, except for the ball busters and my doctor. That's pretty much it, yo. But I know that when I have nightmares, I can turn to one of them and talk about it. Um, and if you, you don't have anybody you can turn to, you need to talk to somebody. Uh, remember 7cups.com. www.7cups.com. Okay, it's free, anonymous, professional mental health advice. Okay, they will help you get through your shit. They help me and they will help you. All right, be sure to check them out. Now, through the week, I've got a number of videos that I'm going to be dropping because I want, like I said, to keep staying busy. I need to get out of this pity shitty party. It's been like a week now that I've been riding this turd, okay? And it's time to get off. Uh, so I'm going to try and, and, and do some work and, and try and stay busy through this to help pick me up. I know Wednesday I've got some new tattoo machines coming in that we will be talking about and unboxing. Uh, especially the pen tattoo machine. I've never used one before, so it should be pretty cool. Uh, I think uh, I've got a cooking video coming up. It's not that I think. I know i got a cooking video coming up with craft Dinner and Ketchup Chips, yo. All right? Two beautiful culinary creations that you can find here in Canada being eaten on the regular. Um, and I want to share those uh, with you. I may also talk about Nipsey Hussle. All right. He was gunned down uh, in California uh, last last night. I was, I believe it was yesterday. Um, but he was relatively new to the hip hop scene. He'd been around since like the mid two thousands. Uh, but he kind of he didn't really get uh, kind of notoriety and fame until about two thousand and eighteen when he dropped his first kind of commercial album. Uh, you know, Jay-Z had been picking up a lot of his stuff when he was working, uh, you know, um, doing his thing before he became, uh, somewhat commercial. But I think it's something I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, I have an interest in gang culture and stuff like that. Uh, I belong to something called the Ontario Gang Investigators Association when I was a cop. Uh, and so I learned a lot about, um, like the Trinitarios, um, you know, the Salvatrucha, all, all the kind of street gangs that we were getting here in Canada. Uh, and obviously, uh, Nipsey was a, was a crip, yo. Um, and so I want to get into that kind of stuff. So stay tuned this week. We've got some interesting videos coming up. A few things that I don't normally do or talk about. Uh, maybe just to keep it interesting for you. So check it out. Listen, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're good. Stay up, stay strong, yo. Look out for each other because we're all we got. Peace. Ready to ride, 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 ride. Fire keepers. Keepers. David Strickland. Shoot rap. Peace, my natives.